shooters Most y'all niggas really pops to us I'm in my prime like Optimus 1715 to play with That's the wrong numbers So for our voice, we want to say call hello Yahweh by Shimmy Al Shai That's all praises to the Most High God In the name of His only begotten Son Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ But in the Hebrew, His real name is Yahweh Shai We are Hebrew Israelites We come out here week in and week out to let the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans know that they are Israelites according to the Bible and true Jews of the Bible. Also, to prophesy the downfall of this wicked kingdom known as Babylon the Great, as well as then the damn devil, which is the so-called white man, know that he is the damn devil according to the Bible. Man, we are, man, back out here in Riverside, y'all thought we was gone, right? Nah, we haven't left. Just because we was gone for two weeks don't mean we gone. We out here, man. We're going to be out here every week to let our people know who they are according to this Bible, man, as the Israelites. Let me get that. It's the book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 10. And it reads, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. This is not your rest. What we see out here, man, is our people at rest, man. They're highly comfortable in the position that they're in right now. They forgot that. What's going on, man? What's going on? You got questions? What you mean playing around with God? How are we playing around? We're very serious about our power, about our God. What's going on, man? You got questions? How are we playing around? Yeah, man, people just come up here saying anything. They don't know what's going on. No, actually, you're not saying the truth. That's right. That's right. Hey man, they just know that you are you a true Jew, man. If you are, I know who my people are. Who's your people? What tribe? Judah. That all praises. That's right, man. Just repent, be converted, man. You got to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments on the most high. Hey man, that's that's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're required to do. Hey man, all praises, man. Just repent, repent, man. How you know he ain't repent? What are you, 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 what are that the so-called white man rules over you. You must have forgot that you're not in your own land. Right. You must have forgot that you are in captivity, that you're in slavery, that the so-called white man enslaved you. He captured you and enslaved you. He brought you over here from your own land, from Africa. And he took over the, the Northern Kingdom, which is the Northern Americans and, uh, and the indigenous Mexicans. He took over your land. Right. Y'all must have forgot that you're in captivity right now. It just don't make no sense how comfortable you guys are being in bondage. And what Roy Jones said? Yeah, they must have forgot. Roy, you like Roy Jones. You must have forgot. <laughs> this is not our rest, man. There's no way, there's no reason why we should be restful right now. You guys, let me get that uh, Ecclesiastes 7 to 7. Bring that up. There's no reason why we should be comfortable right now in bondage, in captivity. What? How docile have our people become, man? How docile, man, how obedient our people became to their enemies, to their oppressors. We didn't used to be this way, man. We used to be a mighty nation, man. Uh, yeah, bring that out. This is the book of Ecclesi Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 7. Surely up. oppression maketh the wise man mad. Surely oppression make a wise man mad. I don't see nobody out here being mad right now, man. Our people walking around here with smiles on their faces. Just cheesing away, man. Just happy as hell. Right. Out here in slavery and captivity. Right. You guys are you guys act like you're not oppressed. This oppression is not making you mad. Right. Why? Why isn't this oppression making you mad? And a gift destroys the heart. Because you guys are receiving gifts, man, from the so-called white man. That's right. He's giving you little measly crumbs and you guys are just comfortable right now. Right. Like you got it good. That gift destroyed your heart. Right. Made you forget that you were oppressed. Made you forget that you were in captivity and bondage. 
in, in, uh, under the rulership of the so-called white man. Made you forget about your own rulership that you used to have, man. Right. Made you forget about the rulership that's to come. What we're going to talk about. Let me get that. Uh, we got Genesis. Who's reading? Who's this reading? is the book of Genesis. What's, what's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, who's reading? I just want to see who was reading. I just want to see who. Who? Yes. You, you been drinking, man? You been drinking? Just a simple question, man. I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. You said who's reading? Yes, sir. What's that mean? Are you getting a question? You're asking, you're asking what they do? Are you getting a question in a foul way? You guys know that shit. You made me feel uh, like like this shit. Like uh, maybe we just, we just asking your questions, man. We're just asking you a simple question, man. Nah, we know that shit. Scandalous, right? Wait, what are you talking well, about, well, man? What? You made me feel inferior? Made you feel inferior? How? You made me feel inferior. How? I'm just asking you a question. So I came at you like this. Hey man, you better back up. Exactly. Back your ass up. Exactly. Back your ass exactly. Up. Exactly. 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 Let me address that right quick. I'm gonna explain something to you, right? You never walk on a bunch of men like that. You should know better than that. But I figured I come on a group of men. You guys should. If you do that, if you, if you come at us, if you come at us with 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 a calm walk. And extend your arm to us, like knowing that we your people, like then we expect we respect that. Like I've been, you didn't do that when you ran like up here just now. Been. You didn't do that when you ran up here just when now. When I said who was speaking, I said who was speaking, I came on you. Yeah, you see, hey. but listen, listen, listen. When you walked hey. up the first time and you're said like, that, nobody even, moved. Did you move? Nobody you can't moved. Do you can't but I'm telling reverence. you this. I'm telling you this. This goes for anybody that walk up on these men. Right. You're liable to lose something. On you, dude. Listen, 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 on you. listen, 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 listen. We don't have a problem with you. You are people. I'm sad. I mean, hey, we just want you to be safe out here, you know? But hey, that goes for anybody. Don't right. walk up here. You know what I'm saying? We well, love all my people, but don't lost. walk up here. I want to be sad hey, man, we there. Yeah. Don't walk up here. We follow this Bible, but we will molly rock you real quick. Real quick. Whether you Israel or not, come up here with some sense, man. Come up here with some decorum. Hey, man, we all hurt. We all hurt. You ain't the only one hurt out here. That's why we out here, because we hurt. No, no. We try to talk to our people, man, yeah, about our hurt and how we can how we can get out of this hurt. Ow. That's what we're talking about. Ow. How? Come over here and listen, man. I'm not being like, how do you come and listen? You you think you discriminate me because I come and listen? Discriminate, man? Come on, man. You just you just saying anything that comes to your mind right now. Nobody's discriminating you. What's your nationality? American. You're American? What's your ethnicity? That's not an ethnicity. I'm first born American. That's not an ethnicity. I'm gonna make it American. What's your father? Just like you guys, we're gonna make it American. The Book of Psalms, chapter 55, verse 22. Read it out. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and He shall sustain thee. You say you hurt right now, man, but you gotta cast your burden onto the Lord, man. That's what you need to do. That's what we're trying to tell our people, to cast their burdens onto the Lord. You guys don't seem friendly to help. We are friendly out here, man. If we weren't friendly, we would have hurt you, man, for walking us up on uh, walking up on us like that. Somebody help me, please. Can you? I'm dealing with alcohol. Man, you, you, obviously, obviously, you're dealing with an alcohol problem, man. We want you to get sober, man. Sober up. You sober up, man. You come back out here next Saturday, man. We'll talk to you. All right, man. We're going to be out here for Friday 8th. Sober up, man. You got it? Hey, You are good, man. You are good. You are people, man. Possible. You want this fire now? In Genesis. Our people, man, are lost out here, man. Like we were just talking about, man. They would have to come and confront their own people, man. Yeah. We just out here. We out here for you, you so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, man. We out here for you. Right. And nobody else. We know our people are hurt. We know our people are lost out here in the dark. Lost in the sauce, man. We out here, man, to, to show them the, how to, to show them how they heal themselves, man. That's a, that's all through this Bible, man. That's all through the most high God. That's the only way you're gonna be able to heal yourself. Coming back to these law statutes and commandments. You don't do that, you're gonna continue to be hurt. You're gonna continue to be cursed. Get that. This is the book of Genesis. Chapter 27, verse 7. Bring me venison. Uh, I said, uh, what's that? 28, 7. 28, 7. 
No, uh, no, 17 and 8. Slack, yeah. 17? Yeah, 17 and 8. <clears throat> Start at 7. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 7. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. This is the Most High God, man, talking to Abraham, man. He said he's going to establish a covenant with Abraham between him and uh, with, between the Most High and Abraham, man. And thy seed after thee. And thy seed after thee, man. Our seeds are seed seeds, man. That covenant is long, like forever. It's a forever covenant, man. That covenant of the, you know, keeping up, um, the last statutes and commandments and that covenant of receiving a promised land. That's what our people are not understanding out here, man. They don't understand that they have a rulership, they have a promised land that's, that's promised to them, that's inherited to them through the Most High God. But they're out here at rest thinking this is their kingdom. Acting, acting like this is their rulership. When they have people ruling over them. No, we're going to have a, a place, a kingdom, a rulership where we're ruling over everybody else. We're not going to be ruled over. We're not going to be oppressed. We're not going to be enslaved. We're going to be the ones doing the enslaving. Bring it out. We're the ones that's going to be the judging. That's what the Most High God said. That's the promise that the Most High gave to his chosen people, the Israelites, man, which are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You guys have a rulership coming your way. The only way you're going to receive that rulership is if you get right. If you come back to the Most High God, unless you, and, until you repent. That repent means to turn, man. Turn from your wicked ways. Turn from that direction that you're going, man. Because all that, that direction that you're leading, being led to is straight to a damn ditch, man. Straight to a pit. So bust that you, we man. Bust that you turn, man. And come back to the Most High God. And be converted. Come back to His ways. His ways are already lost at his commandments. That's the instructions that he gave us. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations for an everlasting covenant. For an everlasting covenant to their generations, man. We got a promised land coming to us, man. We got a kingdom, man, that's better than any ever kingdom that you have ever seen, man. A hundred times better, man. Ain't gonna be no wickedness up in that place, man. Ain't gonna be no damn transsexuals walking around, no homosexuality, no no pedophilia, no 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 evil, no killing, no murder. That's the kingdom that we were promised, man. We don't have to walk walk these streets with a, without a care, man, in our kingdom. To be a god unto thee and to thy seed after thee. He said to be a god, man. To be a god unto thee, man. We out here gods, man. The Israelites are gods, man. That's right. He said we're going to be a god unto thee. The Most High God calling us gods. We ain't talking about you damn white people, man. Y'all the damn devil. Y'all not gods. That's what the hell you are. The so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Those are the gods. Those are the royalty. That's the rulership. That's the ones that's going to be ruling the land of Jerusalem, Zion, Israel. Drop that. We get uh, uh, we get Genesis uh, twenty-eight three. This is the book of Genesis, chapter twenty-eight, verse three. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful. This is the uh, Most High God now. That uh, now Abraham talked to his son Isaac. Man, he's giving, he's passing down that blessing onto Isaac, man, because the blessings go from Abraham to Isaac unto Jacob. So this is Abraham. Passing all that blessing unto his son, his seed. It didn't go to Ishmael. It goes to Isaac, man. The chosen seed out of Abraham is Isaac. And out of Jacob, I mean, out of Isaac is Jacob. The 12 tribes. Not Esau. And multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. And give thee the blessing of Abraham. See that? Give thee the blessing of Abraham, man. To thee and to thy seed with thee that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger which God gave unto Abraham. He said that we are going to inherit the land, man. That's what we're going to that kingdom, that the kingdom to come is for Israel, man. It ain't for all these other nations. It's only for Israel. The so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. Shalom, king. That's who it's for. Our men are our kings and priests. Our women are princesses, man. But our women walk around here 
and full Hortum walking around looking like whores, man, with their ass hanging out, man. Not covered up, not in modesty. Making men to lust after them, not knowing if they got husbands or not, man. Y'all women are going off. But y'all not going to be that way in the kingdom, man. Y'all going to be in full submission, full subjection, full righteousness. Ain't going to be none of that wickedness going on. Uh, you can drop that. Let me get Deuteronomy. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 8. Check it when the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance. When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, their lands. He, gave, he divided the, um, these nations and gave them their land. When he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. For the Lord's portion is his people, man. The, the, the Israelites are the Most High God's portion, man. And that, that portion, the Israel, they're going to they're gonna receive an inheritance, man. What is that inheritance again? That land, that promised land, man. That kingdom, that rulership that's going to reign forever. That's going to last forever and ever and ever, man. This kingdom now that you see right now, it's, gonna, it's passing. This is Esau's kingdom right now. But that's going to pass away. They're going to lose their rulership. And we're going to receive that rulership over the whole earth, man. The Israelites. Ain't gonna be no more of being subjection to these damn devils, the damn white man. Right. Ain't gonna be no more of that, man. They're gonna be in subjection to us. They're the ones that's going to slavery next. Because what goes around comes around, man. According to Revelation 13 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity must go into captivity, man. Right. You're gonna reap what you sow, so-called white man, and you other nations that contributed to the enslavement of the Israelites. You're going into captivity as well. You're not getting away out of that. Let me get a... Cut. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, from the top. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as him that... Salakia. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter... Take your time, King. Take your time. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, from the top. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as afflicted him. The righteous man, the righteous man, the righteous are going to stand with great power, man, straight confidence, man, in front of the one that afflicted us, man. Right. That's these other nations. That's the other nations that have, that have afflicted us, that have oppressed us, man, that rape, robbed, and pillaged us, man. Take us from our culture. Take us from our customs. Take us from our faith, stolen our faith, man, Teach and try to use it for themselves to try to deceive us and to believe in something different, man. Right. That's what these churches are doing, man. Right. They deceive us, man. And you guys are out here paying them all type of arms and, and all type of money for them to deceive you, to lie to you. Y'all got to learn that's all deception. You got to learn to read the Bible, read the book for yourselves so you can see that you're being manipulated, that you that you're being deceived into lies, man. That you're being deceived into destruction. Because that's all they're leading you to, into judgment. You keep following after these damn pastors, man, in these churches, man. Making all that money. Getting all this monetary gain to tell you lies. They're leading you straight into judgment. Straight to your demise, straight to your death. Y'all got to wake up, man. What's that? and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. Y'all gonna, gonna be troubled with terrible fear, man, upon that day. Upon that day, man, when, we're in our, in, when that new covenant comes, upon that judgment day, y'all gonna be troubled with terrible fear. Y'all gonna be like, damn, they were the chosen. They are the men and women of the Most High God. Right. This is on the way, it's on our rise, man. It's soon to come. Soon as you see our power, our king, Yahweh Shai come, our king, man, he's coming, he's coming to destroy. He ain't coming to bring peace, he's coming to bring a sword to chop y'all in half for all that you have done for afflicting us. And the most high God is allowing his son to do that, man. Because he had promised us that land and we're gonna receive that land. But we have to in, in, in order for us to receive that land, like I said, and like the Bible says, we have to repent. You have to repent and come back to the Most High God and keep His law, statutes, and commandments. That's the only time 
that, that's, that's when things are going to be overturned. That's when we're going to possess that land. That's where that new covenant comes. That's where that judgment upon our enemies comes. You found on that? It shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. You say you're going to be amazed at the strangeness of our salvation. Though. Man, you're going to be amazed. Like, damn, all this time we've been troubling these people, man. They are the people of the Most High God. The Most High God was really, this Bible is really true, man. You think that he's not going to come and save his people? You think his word is void? It's going to come back void? No, nah, he's real serious about his word. He's real serious about the apple of his eye, man. The chosen seed, the chosen people. Y'all better understand that. This is the book of Zach Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 3. Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion, and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. He said, Most High God said he dwelleth in Zion, man. He's going to return to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. The Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, man. The people of truth. That's what that's that's what's going to dwell in that city. The city of truth are the Israelites, man. That's what's going to dwell in that city. Giving judgment, being all about righteousness, man. That's what we're out here telling you all about the truth. That's what we're in right now. Is in the truth. And the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. God, the holy mountain, man. That's that's uh, that's uh, synonymous to Israel, man. Israel is that holy mountain. That's what y'all gotta understand. Israel is that holy mountain. Let me get a uh, uh, First Peter two and nine. So that holy government, that holy people, man, is Israel. That's what's gonna be that holy mountain. Right. This is the book of First Peter, chapter two, verse nine. And you are a chosen generation. We are a chosen generation, man. A chosen generation, man. A royal priesthood and holy nation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, man. Uh, uh, come on, man. What's going on? You believe in uh, Christ? You believe in Jesus? You do? No, you don't. You're a liar and a thief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't believe in those. Well, yeah, look at them. That's what I'm, oh, yeah. Come on, baby. <laughs> I believe in Jesus. <laughs> uh, start that over. First Peter chapter two verse nine. Ye are a chosen generation. Right. A royal priesthood. So we are a chosen generation, man. Ain't talking about that damn devil over there, man. Ain't talking about these Edomites or these other nations. It's talking about Israel and Israel alone. We are that royal generation, that royal priesthood, man. And holy nation, a peculiar people, that shall show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Ah, we're supposed to be showing forth, man, that, that, that greatness of the Most High God, man. That's not what our people are doing right now. You see, our, you see us right now trying to show forth that greatness, trying to show you, uh, trying to give you the, this truth of this Bible. Because our people are just, like I said, they're in the dark, man. They're not trying to show forth that righteousness upon uh, upon our people, upon, you know, trying to show them how to walk. Because they're not following after this Bible. They follow after their preachers, their pastors, who are leading them astray. That's who they're following. That's why we're still in, under these curses. That's why we're still enslaved under this rulership of Esau. Because we're not following these law statutes and commandments. Because as soon as we do that, then one third of our people are going to be brought up, man. We're going to get lifted up out of this land. And two thirds of our people are going to be destroyed because y'all are going to continue to be joined hand in hand with the damn heathen. Drop that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. Man, in that day, man, the Lord is going to give us rest from our sorrow, man. From our sorrow. We need that. Just like that man dude is over there saying he's hurting. He said he's hurting right now. You, you can tell that he's hurting because he's out here walking around drunk in his hot ass heat. He's trying to get away from something. That's our people, man. Our people are, you know, just off of drugs and all type of stuff because we're trying to get away from that hurt that we've been receiving, man, that we've been dealing with. All types of hurt. This curse is not upon our people, man. That's, that's hurt. That's pain. 
and from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Now, hard bondage that we were made to serve, man. That slavery. When we are brought over here from West Africa, man. When our, when our Northern Kingdom brothers was, uh, was raped, robbed, and murdered, I mean, from their land, pillaged for their land, man. They snatched up their land. What'd you say? We get that. Proverbs 31 to 7. Our people out here suffering, man. And our people don't understand that they don't seem to realize it. They don't seem to care. They just are letting bygones be bygones, man. Not looking for any type of remedy. Not looking for any type of solution. Not looking for the conclusion of the whole matter. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 7. Let him drink his misery no more. So let him drink, man. <laughs> That's exactly what that brother is doing, man. Trying to forget all his misery. But guess what? He's going to remember as soon as he sober up. That misery ain't going nowhere. That affliction ain't going nowhere. You can drink all you want to drink. It's going to ease you for, for you know, momentarily. But you're going to come into remember. Only way that soul is going to leave our people is by following after the Most High God, man. Coming back to Him. Being converted. Turn it from your wicked way. What's going on, man? Don't crash. Come apart so you can hear what we're saying. Hey, put that on that. We get that, uh, Zechariah 8 4. But Zechariah, man, is talking about the kingdom. In Zechariah 8. This is talking about the kingdom to come, man. And how we're going to be dwelling. We're, how we're going to be walking upon this earth. The, er the inheritance that we were promised. It's the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 4. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, There shall yet old men, old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem. He said old men and old women are going to be dwelling in, the, in the Jerusalem, man. Yeah. But our, us as men, we're going, to be, we're going to be more appreciative and more, and more loving of our wives. And our wives are going to be more loving of us. So we're going to dwell with them yeah, walking on this earth for, for our old age, man. Right now, we're not doing that. Oh, our women are outliving the men right now. Right. Our men are dying young from all the, 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 the oppression and the stress and the hardship that we have to face, man. Our women are outliving us right now because they have received the gift as well to, to, to destroy the heart. They're out here living comfortably, but they don't know that they're still under the curses as well. Who curses ain't leaving the women? But in the kingdom, we're going to be able to live old age with our women. That's what it says. Read that again. Zechariah 8 and 4. Thus said the Lord of hosts, There shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem. Man, we're going to be men. Think how lovely that is. You're going to really love your wives then. Right now. <laughs> I, I know many brothers that, you know, <laughs> that want to, you know, strangle their wives. Now, the, way they be, uh, the way their wives be oppressing them, man. And, uh, and these women, man, they, they, they're going to be in full subjection to their men. They're going to be in full submission to their men. Ain't going to be none of that uh, being stiff-necked. Ain't going to be none of that disobedience to their heads. None of that's going on. None of that's going to happen. They're going to be walking in full righteousness as well as us. And every man with the staff in his hand for very age. Man, think of that, man. Every man with a staff in his hand, man, to old age, man. Verse 5. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Thus said the Lord of hosts. They said the, the boys, our children, our children are going to be able to dwell in these streets safely. They're not going to have to worry about any type of evil, any type of pedophilia, any type of, uh, you know, uh, sex trades or, you know, uh, kidnapping. Yeah, kidnapping. They ain't going to have to worry about you no know, drive-bys and nobody, you know, doing nothing wicked to them. Right. And us as parents, we're going to be able to dwell safely as well, knowing our children are out there safe, wherever they're at, or whatever they're doing. We don't have to worry about where they're at. We're, we know, we're going to know that they're going to be safe. We're going to be that comfortable. We're going to be that at peace. Just think about that, man. Think how great that kingdom is. We can't do that now. We got to look out. We, we got to be out there with our children as they play. Watching their every step. Right. Okay. Let me get a slide. 
Let me get a... Isaiah 11 and 6. You got the NLT? Let me get, uh, give me Isaiah 11 and 6 in the NLT. Man, I, man, we need to be overjoyed with that. We need to be real anxious about that, man. What's going on, brother? Uh, can I ask you a question? What's your, uh, what's your nationality? What's your ethnicity? You black? So-called black man, right? But uh, you are you black? Are you are you the color black? No, are you the color black? You the color of my jeans? No, you ain't. You brown, brother. You brown, brother. Why are we out here calling ourselves by these by words, man? That we not. We gonna say we black because that's what I said that we were. What you say? Nah, man. That's that. We ain't supposed to be going by these colors, man. Well, if we're gonna if we're gonna go by color, we're gonna say that we brown. But in our actual in our actuality, our true ethnicity is we're from Israel. Right. We're Israelites, according right. to the Most High God, according to this Bible. That's right. Have you ever heard that? Our people are just destroyed, man. Just cursed out here. Right. Just talking, don't even know what's going on, but want to cuss out our people. Right. Go, go, go cuss out your oppressor. Right. Go cuss out this whole called white man. We got a brother. We can't do that. The book of Job, chapter 8, verse 8. Bring it up. For inquire, I pray ye of the former age. Hold on, hold on, hold on, brother. Hold on, brother. Black. You still black. You still got to go by that fire word, huh? Even though you know you brown. And I just told you that you guys chosen people of Israel, more than likely from the tribe of Judah. You, you feel like you chose him? All praises that you feel that you chose him, man. But we gotta act. We gotta act as such, man. We gotta act accordingly. It's one thing to know that we're chosen, but we're, when we're not acting like we're chosen, hey, man, that's that's what we fail at, can't? Why why are we in this position? Well, like, um, some white like man's laws, right? Well, it's, it's called California law. But why are we in this position? Why are we struggling out here? Why are we oppressed out here? Lack of education. I mean, that, that's that's part of it. That's that's curses upon our people. Did you know that curses are upon our people? The Most High God said He's gonna put curses upon our people, and guess who fits upon His people? And guess who fits those curses? The so-called black man, the so-called Mexican man, and Native American man. Let's hear, let's hear one of those curses. Give me a, let's talk about the madness. Give me a Deuteronomy 28, uh, what is that? Uh, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. Bring it up. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. You see that, you see her? The Most High God said he's gonna smite us with madness. What is she out there doing, man? Out here cussing out the wind. He said he's going to strike us with madness. That's been falling upon our people with PTSD. Out uh, here suffering through, uh, you know, taking these drugs, taking all these damn poisons that we ain't supposed to be taking, man, that, that's destroying our minds, destroying our hearts. That's a curse that was put upon our people. Bring it on, uh. And blindness and astonishment of heart. You said that blindness and astonishment of heart. Uh, give me 28. That was 28. Uh, uh, so that, uh, give me 29. No, 28, 28. Is that 29? The oppressed, 20, 29. Verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. He said, we're going to grope at noonday and we shall not prosper in our ways. That's what she doing, man. Groping right. at noonday, man. Out here in the daytime, man. He said, we shall not prosper. Have we been prospering in this land? We're not, we're not from Africa. Say that again. Can we live a prosperous life in Africa? 
No, we know no, wherever we go, man, these curses are going to be upon our people. So if we go to Africa, if we move to Africa, curses are still going to be upon the Israelites, God's chosen people. The only way that these that this affliction is going to be lifted up off of us is if we come back to the Most High God and keep His law, statutes, and commandments. He said that He's going to put these curses upon us because we stopped keeping His law, statutes, and commandments. And that's exactly what we did. You hear me, brother? This is the book of Kings, chapter 8, verse 33. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy because they have sinned against thee and shall turn again to thee and confess thy name and pray and make supplication unto thee. Brother, are you listening? Yeah. Can we start that over? First Kings chapter 8, verse 33. Yeah. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy because they have sinned against thee. He said, Most I guess so we're going to be smitten. Smitten. Against, I mean, from our enemy, man, because we have sinned against him. It shall turn again to thee and confess thy name and pray and make supplication unto thee in this house. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again into the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. Huh. How are we going to be, so, we'll ask you again. How are we going to get this overturned, our affliction? They said that this affliction came upon us because we turned against the Most High God. So how do we get that overturned? Exactly. We gotta let the Most High God control our lives. Now how do we do that? By keeping this thought that it's coming, back, it's coming back to Him, man. That's exactly what we do. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 26. No. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Ah, Jerusalem is the mother of us all, man. Brother, let me get uh, Deuteronomy uh, 28 and 30, 36. But to, to clarify, Israel will be from the Nile River to the Euphrates. To the Euphrates. The Nile River to Egypt. So to clarify, to correct myself, we, we are we are from Africa. But our land our land is in Israel. That's our homeland, it's Israel. All right, King. You, you heard me? You ain't listening. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 36. The Lord shall And you know you know her? You do know her? What, what, what is wrong with her? What, what is she? That, that's your wife? No. Oh, y'all ch chilling at the park and she was tripping in? Oh, it just got closed down right now? Oh, man. I didn't hear that. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand why she mad. Yeah, man, what's going on, man, is to let you know that you are an Israelite, King. That's that you, you calling yourselves black. We need to stop calling ourselves by these by words. Because that, that was a, a curse put upon us as well. Bring out the by word. 36. 37. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. Bring it up. And thou shalt become a, an astonishment, a proverb, and a by word. That's what the Most High God said, man. We're going to become an astonishment, a proverb, and a by word. That's why we're out here calling ourselves Negro, black, uh, Mexican. All these by words that we're not, when we come from Israel, as Israelites, we come from tribes. You will come from the tribe of Judah, more than likely. You're saying you're a black man, African-American man. Thus, they come from the tribe of Judah. Our brother right here, he comes from the tribe of Benjamin, the Jamaicans. Those are the Levites, or are Haitians. Haitians are Levites. This brother right here, he comes from the tribe of Zebulon. He comes from Guatemala. That brother comes from Mexico. He's from the tribe of Is I mean, from the tribe of Issachar. We all come from different tribes, but we're all the same people. We're all illegal. We're all illegal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we all ain't supposed to be here, man. This ain't our, this, uh, that's what I was going into. This is not our rest. This is not our homeland, man. This place is going to be destroyed, man. And if, uh, if you don't want to be a part of that destruction, of that judgment, you got to get right. You got to come back to the Most High God and keep His commandments, man. That's what we're trying to, we're trying to put flashback on our people's going and let them know exactly who they are. What their, what their ethnicity is, um, what their faith is, and who their power is in the Most High God, Yahweh. That's what we're out here for, King. 
to get another. Uh, let me get Deuteronomy 28.1. Deuteronomy 28.1. Yeah. Deuteronomy 28.1. Yeah. Deuteronomy 28.1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments. So the most I got to say, man, if we observe to do all his commandments, if we hearken to him, man, then what? Which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. He said that he's going to, the most high God said he's going to set us on high, man. If we just hearken, if we just come back to him, if we just listen and obey him and keeping his thoughts, statutes, commandments, he's going to set us on high above what? Above all nations. Above all nations. Of the earth. Of this earth, man. So we're supposed to be in rulership. We're a superior people. We're not supposed to be in this position that we're in right now under the rulership of the white man. And, and I kind of, I kind of feel like I don't even really feel like I'm for we are a chosen race, King. Yeah, I feel like everybody comes from, um, from, from black You bring that up, you know how to say this thing. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people. He said thou. For thou art a holy people. So this is most high God speaking through Moses to his people, the Israelites. He's saying that they are a holy people. That holy there in the Hebrew is Kodash, meaning set apart. We're separate. We're not like any of these other nations. So he's saying we're a holy people. We're different. For thou art the holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee. He has chosen us, man. So you have to you have to feel chosen. The most high God chosen you, man, above anybody else. To be a special people. To be a special person, man. Or a special people. That's what you are. You're special. You may not feel like it right now because of what you're dealing with, but you are special, man. We're just under these curses right now. That's all. You are special. You are you are set apart from any other race or any other nation. Unto himself, above all people. He said above what? Above all people. He said he's above, above, above all people, man. So you need to take you need to take pride in that, man. Take great joy in who you are, the most high God said you are. You are above all people. Don't feel like you're inferior for superior, King. Okay? Yeah, and all this folly, all this, all this, all this vanity. Yeah, exactly. It can't be too late. Well, uh, bring that or make no terror. Come back to the Lord. Yeah, man, it can't be too late, man. Our, our people, that's why we're out here, to, to help them. Because that time is now. It's high time right now for our people to wake up out of that darkness. Out of that sleep, man, that they're under, out of that, out of that coma. The book of, the book of Sirach, chapter five, verse seven. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. You gotta make no tarrying, man. Don't wait, man, to turn to the Lord, man. You gotta come back now. Now that you're hearing this, now that you're hearing who you truly are as Israel, as an Israelite, not a, a so-called black man, you can't make no tarrying coming back to the Most High God and keeping His laws, statutes, and commandments, man. That's what He requires of us all. If you want to be saved in that day, if they, uh, on that judgment day, man. You don't want to be um, killed along with these damn devils, man. Okay? Don't make no terror, man, to come back to the Most High God, man. But I don't want to hold you up, man. Just know that you are Israelite, man. And, you know, take great pride in that. Come back to the Most High God. Yahweh. Yahweh is his name. And our king is Yahweh Shai. That's Yahweh's son. Okay, king? Just know that, man. I don't want to hold you up, King. The same to you. Shalom, King. Much love, King. Hey, man. All praises. All praises to the Most High. Yeah, I'll clap it up for that, man. Clap it up for our brother, man. You a king out here on this earth. Get back into this kingdom, man. Let me see. 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 Let me see.
Uh, let me get a, who is we at? Who's that, Isaiah, right? Let me get a Zachariah 8-6. Zechariah 8 and 6. You give me Zechariah 13 and 8. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 6. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of, his, of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in my eyes. Never be wise, in, you know, in that remnant. He's saying that remnant because only a remnant of our people are going to be saved up out of this land. That remnant is one third, man. One third of our people are going to be saved up out of here, man. That, that's that's a small that's a small number, man. Two thirds of our people are going to be destroyed. That's sixty-six point six of our people, man. That's a high number. And I feel like the you know the the, the sand of the sea, man. Uh, that's a lot of Israelites that's going to you know continue to be joined hand in hand with the damn heathen, man. That's still going to be falling into idolatry. That's still going to be rebelling against the Most High God. No matter all of this that's taking place right now, people are still not going to turn to the Most High God. They're still not going to turn to Him for help, seek Him for help. So only one third are going to wake up, man, and be saved up out of this place. Right. Zechariah. Book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. It and it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, Two parts of the range shall be cut off and die. He said two parts of the range shall be cut off and die. Like I said, man, two thirds of our people are going to be destroyed in, upon that judgment day. Right. They ain't going to make it. That's why we out here to try to, tell, try, try to tell you the same thing that the Bible is telling you. Make no tearing to come back to the Most High God. We're trying to wake up that one third, man. Trying to help wake them up. We're trying to be that watchman. Trying to get that blood off our hands. And warn them that destruction is coming. That, that, that judgment is coming upon them, man. If they don't come back to the Most High God. We already see what's happening, man. These damn devils out here, man. Giving us poisons, man. Out here. Feeding us all type of money to, you know, destroy our heart with these gifts. Keep our, keep our eyes, you know, seeking after them, man. Seeking after their help instead of seeking after the Most High God's help. We're out here destroyed. We're a destroyed people. But the third shall be left therein, and I will bring the third part through the fire, and we will find them as silver is refined. That's right, man. He says he's going to bring the third part, man, through the fire, man, and refine them as silver is refined. That's why, our, our, man, we just got to understand, we got to come back to the Most High God. I'm tired, of, I'm tired of seeing our people out here smitten with madness, out here homeless, out here trying to, you know, uh, trying to fight for some money, trying to fight for some crumbs, man, just to make it through the day. All right, get up. Man. <laughs> Talking about it, Gazo. Get that. Get out, that. <laughs> this is the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 7. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. He said he's going to save his people from the east country and the west country, the north country and the south country, man, from all across this earth, from the all four corners of this earth, man. That's where one third is going to go and pick up that people, because that's who Yahweh Shah is going to use. He's going to use the one third that's saved out of America to go save the remnant of the Israelites out of these other nations, out of these other lands. Uh, give me uh, Ezekiel 20 and 33. You give me uh, this real continue reading. Just read on, skip to 10. Now. The book of Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 33 as i live saith god saith the lord god surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out okay. will i rule over you and i will bring you out from the people he said he's gonna bring you out from the people man bring you out from these other nations that's the people that's the heathens and we'll gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered so he's going to gather us, man, out of those countries where, yet, where we were scattered. That's the remnant of our people, man. But one third of our people are going to go and save, save and go and pick, go, go and collect the rest of our people, the rest of the Israelites. You get that? Book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 10. For before these days, there was no hire for men. Which I got to understand, man, this is all kingdom connotations, man. This is what's going to happen. 
when we're, when we're, when we're going into our land, when we're in our land, man. This is what the Most High God is saying through Zechariah. Nor any hire for peace. Neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. For I said all men, everyone against his neighbor. That affliction, man, that affliction of us dealing with oppression, dealing with slavery, dealing with uh, dealing with this captivity, man. That's the affliction that our people are dealing with. We get a... We jump to a... Yeah, y'all hydrate out here, even though y'all in the shade, man. This ain't like Long Beach, man. We all out the sun. You know what I'm saying? The sergeant got y'all all out the sun. <laughs> but uh, let me get uh, Romans 10 and uh, 21. Oh, don't be mad, man. This Riverside, you out here in Riverside, man. Let's look up Romans chapter 10, verse 21. But to Israel, he saith, All day long have I stretched forth my hand unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Read that again. Romans 10 and 21. But to Israel, he said, All day long have I stretched forth my hand. He said, all day long, the Most High God, he said he stretched forth his hand, man. Right. He has his head, he has his arms open for us to come back to him, man. He's waiting on us. He's waiting on us. We ain't waiting on him. We the ones that's over here making, um, making Terry to come back. He says his hands are stretched out waiting on us to come back to him, man. With, with open welcoming, man. Open arms. Take that, take that in for Take that in for King. Yeah. Hey, just consider. Unto a disobedient Bible and gainsaying people. No, no, the one that says the white man is the devil. Yeah, that's the one. This is the book of Colossians, <laughs> chapter 3, verse 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. Are y'all out here, are you Israelites, you so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans thinking that you're going to get away with all the wrongs that you've been doing? All this wickedness, all this unrighteousness that you've been doing, man? Nah, man. Judgment is coming upon you. You're going to reap what you sow. Hey, what's going on, brother? You, you got a question? This is the church, man. We're two, we're two or three gathered, so it's the church. We don't need to be under no, no, you know, no temple or no. I talked to that brother before. You know, what I'm saying that you said. Yeah, I talk, I remember you and her. I remember y'all. <laughs> yeah, but this is the church, King. You know, you know, come out here, you know, join us, man. Fellowship with us. What's the name of the No, we come out here every Saturday, every Saturday, every weekend, man, to, to tell our people who they truly are according to the Bible. Right. Tell them their true ethnicity. Tell them about their, their faith, man, because these, these churches are out here deceiving us right. and to believe in lies. Believe yeah, we believe in Christ. Uh -huh. We believe, yeah. Do you believe in Christ? Yeah. You, uh, you, know, uh, what, you know, what's Christ's color? I don't know his color. His color. We know his color. The Bible knows his color. He's brown skin. Yeah. He is brown skin. Yeah. So what's that tell you? Tell everybody that Hold on, King. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 1. Bring it out. This revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. So this is John the Revelator receiving a revealing, man, a revealing of, you know, Christ, the Hamashiach. With that. Chapter 13 and 14. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his foot. So he's talking about Christ right here. He's saying that he has a garment on and he has a girdle, golden girdle. So he has a body. Okay. And girt about the patch with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. He said his hairs on his head were white like wool, it was white as snow. So he has white hair, white beard. And his eyes were a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass. His feet unto fine brass. What color is brass? Light brown. Light brown? Good. As if they burned in the furnace. Now, if, you, if you put that brass in a furnace, what color would it be? Exactly. Yeah, that's 
So that what's that tell you? Yeah. That Christ was a so-called black man. So his people are so-called black as well. But you, you're not receiving this type of information in these churches. Right. They're not telling you this. They're not telling all people this. Right. We still out there. We still out there serving uh, that that damn white Jesus out there, man. All praises. All praises to the Most High. Get that man a hand clap. All praises to the Most High. Uh, we don't. We don't have it either. We don't have an exact date of when he was born, but we know that he was born like during the spring. You have to prove that. I can't prove it. How are you going to prove it? Uh, I don't have my phone with me to show you. But it says. So we, we're just going to believe you? No, no, no. no, no. Well, 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 there's a uh, scripture in the Bible that explains what the stars and the planets and all that stuff is. And you said, say that again. They follow you. They think they, they work. They, uh, they uh, follow the. Uh, they follow Are you the talking about the, the three wise men at that yeah. time? Yeah. Okay. So, so the three wise men, they follow the stars. Well, it's, it's not a number. Go ahead. Say, say that again. Let's no, proceed. Proceed. I'm just saying. No, proceed. They follow the stars to find the Jesus. Because they think that Jesus is the Messiah. Yeah. How you how are you gonna get an exact day of that though? Because they because the because the stars they do they they follow a pattern, right? Uh, I'm not sure. Do they follow a pattern? They do. Stars follow a pattern? Huh? Yeah, so you're saying that stars have patterns or are you saying they follow a pattern? They follow patterns. That's how I mean, you got twenty four hours. I mean you got you got you got so forth. Uh, because the, because the car could read the stars. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That doesn't change. It's deeper than what I can get into today. But with me and my family, we found out that the day 9-11 is actually the birthday. But we're in the Bible. Okay. We're in the Bible. Does it say... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're in the Bible. Does it say to celebrate his birthday? Uh, it doesn't. It, so why are we even concerned about that? We're not. It's not important. What's important is you believe that what that he died for your sins, and have you repented of your sins so that you can uh, make your way to heaven. Hold on, I missed that. Say it again. Do you believe that he died for your sins? Yeah, he died for he died for our previous sins before his crucifixion. Right. That's what he died for, our previous sins, not the sins after. But we weren't born. Yes. What do you mean we weren't born? You know, you know, you don't believe in regeneration, huh? We were born. We was there. He died for our previous sins, man. So are you saying that we don't have to? I mean, we can still sin. We can sin right now. No. So what do you what do you get in that right now? I'm saying because you said that his birthday is not important. It's not. And I said that you said what is important. And I said what is important is that he died for our sins. Yeah. Yeah, but who who is he talking to? He died for whose sins? The world. It says the world right there. Let me get Matthew one and twenty one. The book of Matthew, chapter one, verse twenty one. Yeah. And she shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He so says he shall save his people, not the world. There's no world right there. Where'd you get that from, King? He should serve save his people. He should serve his people. Right. Come. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Here it is. Hold on, hold on. We're going to find out who he's talking to. Okay. The book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 6. But thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. My people Israel. That's who he's talking to. That's There's no world right there. He's talking to the world of Israel. To his people. The world of Israel? His people. He said right there. Read that again. Yeah, read that again. The book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 
chapter 2, verse 6. Bring it out. But thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor. Out of thee shall come a governor. Who is that governor?